Today we are going to look at the Sulic Law argument from Henry V, Act 1, Scene 2, lines 8 through 116. I will be speaking the part of King Henry, and I will also be playing the part of the Archbishop of Canterbury. My learned lord, we pray you to proceed, and justly and religiously unfold, why the law Sulic that they have in France or should, or should not, bar us in our claim. And God forbid, my dear and faithful Lord, that you should fashion, rest, or bow your reading, or nicely change your understanding soul, with opening titles miscreate whose right suits not in the native colors with the truth. For God doth know how many now in health shall drop their blood in approbation of what your reverence shall incite us to, Therefore, take heed how you impawn our person, how you awake our sleeping sword of war. We charge you in the name of God, take heed. For never two such kingdoms did contend, without much fall of blood, whose guiltless drop are every one a woe, a sore complaint, against him whose wrongs give edge unto the swords, that makes such waste in brief mortality. Under this conjuration, speak, my lord. We will hear, note, and believe in heart that what you speak is in your conscience washed as pure as sin with baptism. Then hear me, gracious sovereign, and you peers, that owe yourselves, your lives, and service to this imperial throne. There is no bar to make against your highness claim to France. But this which they produce from Pharamond, in terum salicum malernes ne secudant, no woman shall succeed in Solic land, which Solic land the French unjustly glows to be the realm of France, and Pharamond, the founder of this law and female bar. Yet their own authors faithfully affirm that the land Solic is in Germany, between the floods of Sala and of Elbe, where Charles the Great, having subdued the Saxons, there left behind and settled certain French, who, holding in disdain the German women for some dishonest manners of their life, established then this law, to wit, no female should be in heretics in Solic land, which Solic, as I said, twixt Elbe and Sala, is at this day in Germany called Meissen, then doth it well appear that Solic law was not devised for the realm of France, nor did the French possess the Solic land, until four hundred one and twenty years after the defunction of King Pharamond idly supposed the founder of this law, who died within the year of our redemption four hundred twenty-six, and Charles the Great subdued the Saxons, and did seek the French beyond the river Sala in the year 805. Besides, their writers say King Pepin, which deposed Childeric, did as heir general, being descended of Blithild, which was daughter to King Glothier, may claim and title to the crown of France. Hugh Capet also, who usurped the crown of Charles the Duke of Lorraine, sole heir male of the true line and stock of Charles the Great, to find his title with some show of truth, though in pure truth it was corrupt and not, conveyed himself as heir to Lady Lingare, daughter to Charlemagne, who was the son to Louis the Emperor, and Louis the son of Charles the Great could not keep quiet in his conscience wearing the crown of France till satisfied that fair Queen Isabel, his grandmother, was lineal of Lady Ermengar, daughter to Charles, the foresaid Duke of Lorraine, by the which marriage the line of Charles the Great was reunited to the crown of France. So that, as clear as in the summer sun King Pepin's title and Hugh Capet's claim, King Louis his satisfaction all appear to hold in right and title of the female. So do the kings of France unto this day. Howbeit, they would hold up this solic law to bar your highness claiming from the female, 
and rather choose to hide them in a net than imply to embar their crooked titles usurped from you and your progenitors. May I with right and conscience make this claim? The sin upon my head, dread sovereign. For in the book of Numbers it is writ, When the man dies, let the inheritance descend unto the daughter. Stand for your own. Unwind your bloody flag. Look back into your mighty ancestor. Go, my dread lord, to your great-grandsire's tomb, From whom you claim, invoke his warlike spirit, And your great-uncles, Edward the Black Prince, Who on the French ground played a tragedy, Making defeat on the full power of France, Whiles his most mighty father on a hill Stood smiling to behold his lion's whelp, Forage in blood of French nobility. O oh, noble English, that could entertain with half their force the full pride of France, and let another half stand laughing by, all out of work and cold for action.